Neptune, the icy planet that sparkles from a distance, always captures our attention despite its great distance from Earth. However, not everything glitters with Neptune, as various features make it unsuitable for human habitation. Recently, scientists made a new addition to the list of challenges associated with Neptune through their latest discovery while studying the first images obtained from the planet. In this video, we'll explore the surprising findings in the first real images of Neptune that have raised concerns at NASA. Could these images reveal an ocean world on the distant planet? Join us as we delve into the unsettling details uncovered in the recent images of Neptune. For decades, Neptune remained a mystery, initially discovered through mathematical predictions rather than direct observations. Telescopes allowed us to observe this celestial body, with the first recorded observation made by Johann Galle on September 23, 1846. Voyager 2's flyby in August 1989 provided a better understanding of Neptune, challenging its title as the farthest planet in the solar system. Despite its small size when observed from Earth, Advancements in space equipment like the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope have enhanced our knowledge of Neptune. As the eighth planet in the solar system, Neptune is classified as an ice giant, often considered a twin to Uranus in terms of its diameter. Ranking as the fourth largest and the third most massive planet, Neptune's equatorial radius is approximately 24,740 kilometers, almost four times that of Earth. Neptune's surface gravity is 1.14 times that of Earth, surpassed only by Jupiter. Recent images from the Hubble and James Webb telescopes have revealed intriguing details about Neptune's internal structure resembling its twin, Uranus. The atmosphere, accounting for 5 to 10 percent of Neptune's mass, is primarily composed of methane, ammonia, and water. As we ascend to higher altitudes, the atmosphere becomes predominantly hydrogen, 80%, and helium, 19%, with traces of methane. The distinctive blue hue surrounding Neptune is attributed to methane's absorption bands, especially in the red and infrared parts of the spectrum. Neptune's atmosphere is divided into the lower troposphere, where temperature decreases with altitude, and the stratosphere, where temperature increases with altitude. The tropopause serves as the boundary between these two regions. Neptune's climate is marked by dynamic stormy systems, with wind speeds reaching almost 600 m per s, making it unsuitable for human habitation. Prevailing winds on Neptune exhibit prograde rotation at high latitudes and retrograde rotation at lower latitudes, a phenomenon believed to be a skin effect rather than a result of deeper atmospheric processes. Moreover, we've discovered that Neptune's equator has a lot of methane, ethane, and acetylene, 10 to 100 times more than at the poles. This finding indicates that there's an upwelling at the equator and a subsidence near the poles. Without meridional circulation, photochemistry can't explain this distribution. The seasonal changes on Neptune have led to larger cloud bands in the southern hemisphere. Also, it's essential to note that Neptune's lengthy orbital period, taking about 165 years to complete one orbit, is the reason why its seasons last for 40 years each. Imagine living on a planet where one season lasts for decades. Not the most appealing offer, right? Neptune, currently the farthest planet in our solar system, is about 4.5 billion kilometers away from the Sun on average. Unlike solid planets, Neptune's atmosphere undergoes a distinct rotation. The broad equatorial zone rotates every 18 hours, slightly slower than the planet's magnetic field at 16.1 hours. In the polar regions, the rotation period is 12 hours. This differential rotation, more pronounced than on other planets, results in strong longitudinal wind shear. Neptune's orbit also has a ripple effect. Astronomers discovered that Neptune's influence extends to the Kuiper Belt, a region beyond the planet similar to Jupiter's asteroid belt but larger. Telescopic observations show that Neptune dominates and shapes the Kuiper Belt structure. Over time, the planet's gravity destabilized certain regions, creating gaps like the one between 40 and 42 astronomical units. However, there are orbits within these gaps where objects can survive for the age of the solar system. These orbits happen when Neptune's orbital period is a precise fraction of the object's orbital period, like the two, three resonance where objects complete two orbits for every three Neptune orbits. 
This particular resonance, known as Plutinos, has over 200 known objects in the Kuiper Belt. This happens because Pluto, the largest object in the Kuiper Belt, is part of Neptune's neighborhood. One thing that puzzled scientists about Neptune for a long time is how it's warmer than Uranus. In the upper regions of Neptune's air layers, the temperature can drop to 51.8 Kelvin. But if we go deeper, where the air pressure is, like what you feel at sea level on Earth, the temperature is 72 Kelvin. As we go even deeper into the layers of gas, the temperature keeps going up. We first learned about this when Voyager 2 visited Neptune many years ago, and it surprised everyone in the science community. Here's the mystery. Neptune, despite being much farther from the Sun than Uranus, is warmer. Uranus, which is closer to the Sun, only gives off 1.1 times the energy it gets from the Sun. On the other hand, Neptune gives off 2.61 times as much energy as it gets from the Sun. It's a bit puzzling because, by the usual standards, Uranus should be warmer due to its closer proximity to the Sun. But Voyager's report was confirmed by further investigations with the Hubble Telescope and JWST. Now, let's address the big question. Where does Neptune get its warmth? To solve this puzzle, we need to understand what it means for Neptune to be warmer. Keep in mind that Neptune is a giant ball of gas, so we can't measure its temperature on the ground like we do on Earth. Instead, we have to take measurements higher up in its atmosphere. Michael Wong, a scientist at the University of California, Berkeley, explains that we can only measure temperatures in the outer layers. Scientists found that Neptune gives off more heat than it absorbs, and this extra warmth comes from inside the planet. In Neptune's case, it's from the heat left over when the solar system was born, contracting from the original solar nebula. This process, known as Kelvin-Helmholtz contraction and gravitational contraction, contribute to Neptune's additional heat source. Neptune is a fascinating planet, and one of the cool things about it is its warmth, which has puzzled scientists for a long time. Even though it's farther from the Sun than Uranus, Neptune is warmer, and that's a bit unexpected. The Voyager 2 spacecraft, Hubble Telescope, and JWST have all confirmed this surprising fact. Now, let's dig into why Neptune is so warm. A scientist named Michael Wong explains that as Neptune slowly gets smaller due to gravity, the material falling inward changes its potential energy into thermal energy. This thermal energy then goes back up and out of the planet. It's like Neptune has its own internal heat source. Scientists are really into studying Neptune because it might have oceans. Some call it a potential ocean world. They've been investigating if the conditions are right for an ocean to exist on Neptune and if it could last. The evidence so far suggests there might be a super hot water ocean beneath Neptune's cold clouds. If that's true, it's a big deal because it could help us learn more about Neptune's electric and thermal processes. Neptune has some interesting moons, and Triton is the star of the show. It's the largest moon and was discovered just 17 days after Neptune itself. Triton is unique because it has a retrograde orbit, meaning it was captured by Neptune instead of forming where it is now. Triton is slowly getting closer to Neptune because of something called tidal acceleration. But sadly, it's expected to be torn apart in about 3.6 billion years. Neptune also rocks a cool planetary ring system made of ice particles coated with different materials. There are three main rings, and they're named after astronomers who studied Neptune. These rings give Neptune its reddish hue. Now, let's talk about the Great Dark Spot. Voyager 2 spotted this massive storm system in 1989, but when Hubble looked in 1994, it was gone. Instead, a new storm had popped up. Neptune has had more storms since then, like the mysterious dark spot in 2023. Scientists are trying to figure out what causes these dark spots, and it seems like they might be caused by dark particles deep in Neptune's atmosphere. However, there's still a lot to learn, and scientists are keeping a close eye on Neptune for any new surprises. Exciting times.